Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and I'm here with Steve today. Um, Steve, before we even get into anything, I just want to say thank you um, for, for me and my family, your hospitality, um, just your kind nature. It really, really, it means a lot. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, if you would, sir, who you are, a little bit about your business, what you do. Well, I'm... I'm I'm Steve Smith, and I thank you for those kind words. Um, I'm, we've been here 29 years in this location. Uh, our dream was to buy a facility. We, we bought 389 acres, and we were going to build a facility uh, and have a place to live on site where eventually we would uh, open it up for sales training or management training or uh, various programs that we would have on site and use our facility. And since we opened it, we, we've had some, some businesses, uh, which I am an entrepreneur, born and raised an entrepreneur. I love it. I, th- I think it and I live it. So we, we have some alternative sources of income that we do. One of them is, is a little unique. It's a hunting preserve where we take people on quail and pheasant hunts and everything's by reservation only. And we do that in the wintertime, and we've done some other things. Uh, We've had some Christian kids camps, and we've done the Fall Fest pumpkin patch. Uh, We've had plenty of room for for different programs uh, that we've we've done. But one of them, maybe eight and a half years ago, I got into the mini barn business, and and I did it by accident. I, I found a mini barn that was for sale, and I thought, yeah, I could use one of those, and and I went in and talked with them and, and got a super deal on it, I felt like. And then it, it hit me when I had to get it moved. That was, <laughs> that was a shocker. Uh, I, I think I had to pay maybe $400 to have it moved. And I felt like, you know, there's got to be some money in this, just moving these things. And from that, I began buying, buying used ones and I would sell them. And I found a used trailer for sale and I was able to take advantage of it, and they, they showed me how to move one building. And from that, and there was no such thing as a mule. Uh, at least I didn't know about <laughs> it. So I did it the old way, the old uh-huh. hard way. Uh, but we, we got it done. And one day I, I moved a building, and when I brought it back, it had some things in it. I was getting them out, and I ran across the contract that they had signed. And I began reading that contract where it was a rent-to-own, and I'd never heard about it. But when I read that contract and began to understand that the percentage was kept 40% at that time, I, I felt like that, that was an opportunity that we needed to dive into. And uh, so we did. I, I, I sat down with my wife, and she, she struggled with wanting to take on another business. But as we moved forward with it, we found out we sold twice as many if you could do payments versus – straight by so that kind of opened up the the road for our rto international which we started and we we rto all of our own own buildings so between the mini barn and i also have an insurance company and we have the the uh, we we just recently opened up our manufacturing facility and and we're, I'm still looking at these things as alternative sources of income which is crazy uh <laughs> You know, I'm sometimes reminded of the, the Chinese general that he was going to take over a territory and, and he brought his army over and, and the first command was burn the boats. And we've heard that story before, but his second command was destroy all the cooking utensils because if we eat, we're going to eat the enemy's food. That's totally focused, wow. totally focused on a direction. And we, we, we've never bid into something where that's all we wanted. Uh, we really were were more interested in having alternative sources so if one went bad we had something else to lean on i i remember reading the art of the deal uh, donald trump and somebody put a microphone in his face and said we understand one of your businesses just went bankrupt he said yes that's true but the other 34 are doing really well <laughs> so I, I like that I, I like i like a guy that's able to see that and and i know uh I know Sam Walton, he, I think he was 45 before he ever built his first Walmart, and he never built a Walmart before he had the manager. He mm. always got the right man first. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
that's that's that says a lot that's powerful um extremely we've kind of for for years now we've said you can take a uh an A plus salesperson and put them in a C minus location and they'll outperform a, an A plus location, uh, every time, uh, because the right person can overcome the obstacles that's, uh, facing them, uh, both in life and in business, I think at times, um, I think you have to have something to measure that against. And the one thing I love about your shirt as you're wearing it here today for CR sheds, uh, God centered solutions oriented. I love that. Uh, I love that you you live faith forward. You live boldly um, with your faith. Your property here is absolutely beautiful. It's peaceful. I've only found two places in my travel that I've felt uh, so at peace. One is Maysville, Kentucky. I know that's kind of um, off kilter here, but um, and then the other is here on your your farm. It's a beautiful farm. Thank you. Um, and and uh, I love to wake up in the morning and see the buffalo. Uh, graze about and uh, you have such an interesting story you're 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 really just sort of a compelling individual for me um, I told you before there's people that you get to meet in your journey your life that just kind of speak to you and uh, you've done you've done that already uh, so tell me a little bit about um, where where did you get started you kind of told me about how you landed in sheds but I know a little bit about your story just because I'm nosy and I start asking questions. Um, born in Miami, and the reason this is this is something I want to point out is because you were born, and we talked about this last night, you were born near Liberty City. Liberty City is the birthplace of Les Brown. Les Brown is both mine and your, like, if not favorite, at least highly regarded motivational speaker and you attended an event from Les back in the day uh, and I can't even explain how much his words has reached me um, you know just just me going down the road in a car uh, how much it's it's spoke to me but you started in Miami and I wanted to get that on the on the record there uh, and then you moved into uh, basically in, industrial construction is that right I'll let you tell the story so I don't uh, get it wrong I, I did and uh I want to say this, that you're talking about Les Brown. I I loved him, and I I loved a lot of things he brought out. And he he brought out, he introduced me to the entrepreneur creed. And uh, that entrepreneur creed, it's probably been 15 years since I I recited it, I guess. But it it was, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by the state looking after me. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid to enjoy the benefits of my creation and face this world boldly and say, this I have done. I believe that. I believe entrepreneurs wake up differently than the world. Call forth those things that be not as though they, they were. were. We yes. live that. We, we have an idea and we create it. And I, I think the world's blessed with the entrepreneurs And it takes more than just that. It takes those people that can come in around them and help untangle some of those ideas they have and put legs on them and make it happen. I mean, it's not one guy's leading this show. Uh, I have a lot of people that that help us, and and they do super jobs. They really do. But anyway, so I left Miami, and and I I went to Alabama and and started residential uh, construction. And I started out at the bottom. I I mean, I was a, a, a... a laborer and worked my way up until I finally became a journeyman carpenter. And, and then I went into industrial construction in Mississippi. And, and from there, they moved me several different places in the United States, out West a lot. And we, we did oil fields and any kind of job, uh, Daniel international acquired, you know, they could send us on, on different things. So the last job was, uh, in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, the Toyota plant. And then from there, I somehow ended up going to work for the Dale Carnegie organization, which is uh, 
probably a key point in my life, and they they they're the ones that have the how to win friends and influence people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Read it yeah. a couple different times. <laughs> I, I, I totally recommend anybody taking that course. I had a guy give me that book when I was sixteen, working at a grocery store uh, in Anna Jonesboro, Illinois. Hey guys, this is The Shed Geek, and I'm here to tell you about the latest in financial innovation to hit the shed industry. It's a program called Backyard Finance. Everywhere I go, shed manufacturers and shed sellers are always asking, how can I get a better payment option for my customer? At Backyard Finance, they're making this a reality. You might be asking, how do I sign up? Simple, just go to Backyard Finance, click on the Get Started Now button, and create an account. After that, you'll have 200 plus banks competing to give your customer the best financial terms possible. With Backyard Finance, you can service your customers two ways, direct to customer lending or direct to merchant lending. With direct to merchant lending, simply fill out an application. It takes about two to four weeks to process that application, but it'll allow you a variety of financing options to make you a more competitive retailer. With FICO scores as low as 500, 600, or 700 plus, your customers will receive financing options with APRs as low as 2.99% or as high as 29.99%. Credit applications are approved in just 15 to 45 seconds. To know more, contact Backyard Finance at 833-692-2286 or email info at backyardfinance.com today. Backyard Finance, funding backyard dreams. He he saw my desire to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and he said, here, read this book. It'll change your life. That's right. I mean, just uh, some guy working in the produce department trying to change his own life, right? Trying to, trying to do better. Uh, probably 25 years old and telling me about how he fell out of college and read this book. And he was, uh, I think he was getting into maybe insurance. I can't remember, but... Anyway, uh, loved it, loved it. One of the Outside of the Outsiders by S.C. E. Hinton. It was one of the first books I read as a teen. Um, so a couple of good ones. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, that, it's definitely been good. Me and you've talked about books. I mean, obviously, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So many different ones that you can read that are, that are life changing and just eye opening. Um, so you got into. Um, Outside of industrial construction, um, where does the story kind of go from there? Uh, well, I ended up after after the Dale Carnegie organization, and, and they taught me sales in, in, a, in, a, in a big way. And, and I ended up connecting with a man that wanted to start a reinsurance company in the state of Tennessee. And uh, he understood the process in the automobile industry, and he taught it to me. And it, it changed my wife and I's lives. And we later ended up opening our own insurance company. And we, we opened up offshore reinsurance companies. So th- that just provided the income for us to do a lot of things, including buying the farm and, and building the facilities that we have. And So that's our, our, our song that brought us to the dance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we still have it. Our, our company's still going strong. And we're blessed. The Lord's been blessing us. Um, I got an email from you one morning and I was, uh, I didn't ask you about sharing this, but I guess I'll share this and, and if it's not okay, I'll edit it out. But, um, you said, I've been seeing, seeing your emails hit my inbox for about a year (laughs) or a couple of years and I've not listened to the first episode. Um, but I was headed to Mississippi on business. I listened for seven hours down and seven hours back, and you have no idea. Uh, between that and your your um, reciting the Les Brown speech this morning that I've heard a million times and should know, <laughs> but don't. Um, gosh, the connection that you have with people. Sometimes you're just out on this island wondering: Is it working? Is it? Is, where's it going? Am I making it? Am I doing the right thing? The only thing you know to do is to just keep listening to God's voice and, and just right. keep and just keep going. And your message that morning really, really, really blessed me, and I, I appreciate that. And I, so I don't say it in a way that should be a statement of arrogance. I say it in a statement of humility. That um, prayers doesn't make any difference. Uh, uh, Philip Yancey 
one of the things I've quoted on here before, and he says, is, I think it was Haddon Robinson, a well-known pastor, used to say, Lord, thank you for my chance to speak today because if these people knew about me what you knew about me, none of them would listen to a word I'm about to say. Uh, so just to be reminded to be thankful, to have a platform to be able to speak and to, to do my absolute best to continue to give it to God to do with what he will, not what I will. Amen. So um, you are... Awesome. <laughs> you have a hunting preserve. Um, you have all kinds of um, guests around the Nashville area show up and take advantage of that. And uh, that's got to be kind of nice that they can come here and kind of have like that safe, quiet place to just get away and experience something in the world that's uh, maybe not high on their list in terms of like celebrity and, and things like that. Uh, and, and you've just the way you've made me feel welcome here. Gosh, they've got to feel that. Then on top of that, uh, this beautiful property, absolutely gorgeous property. Um, you've got all these really cool signs hanging up through there that says dreams do come true. And uh, you've got Buffalo and not everybody has Buffalo, Steve. So that's cool. <laughs> I just think that's neat. And my son had a blast uh, talking about it last night. He just went on a senior trip and he said he's had more fun here today where there's not the hustle and bustle of the world than, than, than anything else. Um, spending time with his friends, right. For a whole week, he, he's had more fun just in the peaceful tranquility uh, of what nature can provide. Um, I truly believe that people meet God here. I believe they know God because of this, this location. I think you're providing that. Let me tell you this. We, we we're running, um, uh, the, the pumpkin patch thing. And I mean, the last month we did it, we had like 6,400 people, but our entrance where the people came in and came out, there was a father leaving and he had his son under his arm and the kid was just screaming and he was taking him out the gate, you know? And, and as he walked by us, he said, man, this place is worse than Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that boy did not want to go home. <laughs> uh, well, there's something about it that uh, that uh, invites people in. So uh, keep doing what you're doing, and 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 because of that point, um, that's one thing that you do. And we talked about early on, even before. It's 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 more than a barn. It's more than a mini barn. It's you know the the the, the vehicle that God chooses to use might be accessory buildings or play sets or furniture or sheds or, or whatever it is. But really, uh, and I've stated before, and I'll double down on that, is that this show is a, a, a ministry. It's an opportunity to continue to share the gospel and the goodness of God through uh, business and entrepreneurship. And that vehicle that God chooses to to have me ride in just happens to be sheds and accessory buildings and, and, and all things that kind of go along with the shed industry. Um, it's awesome to be in an industry that celebrates its faith um, and doesn't run from its faith. What does that mean to you as a business owner? It seems pretty apparent from your shirt, you know, CR, Sheds, God-Centered, Solutions-Oriented, but what does it mean to have your ministry as part of your business? Do you do you separate those? Do you go home and clock out and now it's home time and you go to church and now it's time to be at church and then you come to work and it's time to be at work? What What's your take on that? That's a great question. Great question. Um, I, I want to start out by how we started. And, and when we bought this farm, my wife and I looked at several farms. And when we finally decided this one and, and, and we put the money down, one of the first things we did was, uh, and I know this is going to sound kind of odd, but we, we stood out at our driveway and we we dedicated this farm to God mm -hmm. and we, we asked him to anoint this farm that when people come on it, that they just, they can tell something's different about it. And uh, we wanted him to use us in any way. So from that, uh, we try to define our business. What's our ministry in our business? And, and God gives us different platforms. Uh, our hunting preserve is, is a higher clientele. I mean, they, they pay a lot of money to hunt half a day, and, and most of them are business people, and they're entertaining other people. And we call it a hunting preserve, but we're really in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. and, and to give you an example, and we, we, 
we track numbers. We, we believe numbers are an important part of what we do, but we decided let's, let's pray for our customers. We have a process. Everything we do is process oriented. Uh, so we decided we're going to pray for our customers and What's ironic is we, we interjected it, we do our safety meeting, they see a safety video, and, and then our guide's going to meet them out on the front porch. Well, before that, we, we ask them if they don't mind, we'd like to pray for them. And, and it's a short prayer, you know, and, and uh, our tips ended up going up almost 20%. Mm. We, never, we never were looking for a way to make more money, but it just seems like they just felt like we cared about them, and we did. We we were we were just letting them know we wanted them to have a safe, and we wanted to interject in there. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity mm-hmm. to be able to spend this time in your creation. Man, it 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 sets the whole thing on a, on a great level as they go out into the field. So. God's got a way, you know, he, he just, if you don't worry about the money, I, nowhere in the Bible does it say worry about the money first, right. <laughs> seek ye first his kingdom mm-hmm. and then all else will come. And it does. I mean, God takes care of us. He knows what we're here for and, and how to bless us. And, and he knows who's going to, who's going to do the right thing with it. So we found that the shed business is just it, it's such a, a ripe area because so many times people come here and, 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 I once heard it said most people are only five whys away from sharing their heart. But most people don't want to know. They don't want to ask. They don't want to go that deep because they don't know what to do when they get there. Right. So we look for opportunities. We pray, Lord, show us anywhere you can use us, especially for prayer. If there's somewhere that we can pray for somebody, you show us, Lord. Man, there's people that come here and they're going through a divorce and they, they got to move all their stuff or they're losing their home or all kinds of things. Well, you know, if you don't mind, let me just pray for you real quick. Right. And wow, that just it just opens up. Uh, and, and then, you know, a little bit while later, you, you got to wake up and realize, well, I'm here to buy a shed. Let me go over here and, <laughs> you know, it, 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 and it's, it just, you just look for the opportunity for God to use you and, 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 and pray for that. He gives you the words and he does, it's not a strain. And, and especially my wife does all the RTO, uh, mm-hmm. by choice. I don't know why other than <laughs> she has a heart to help people. And a lot of times those people that are struggling for payments, man, she, she helps work them through mm-hmm. it. Uh, in our church, we had, we had taught the Dave Ramsey class for a while. Then we, we went and learned the crown ministry and we taught crown ministry and helping people get out of debt. Have you ever had a customer ask you about how to supply power to their shed? Do you sell electrical kits as an upsell for your sheds currently? Do you want an easy, no-hassle option? to offer for your customers when they want to add electric to their sheds? Check out Echo Ethics Solar. Echo Ethics Solar is looking for shed manufacturers and shed dealers who want to be able to provide a solar electric option to their line of sheds. With Echo Ethics Solar, you can purchase the SunSaver, a solar product specifically designed with the shed owner in mind. Want to offer a larger product that can operate a full tiny home? At Echo Ethics Solar, they have the necessary product, training, and capacity to meet your customers' needs. Installation for the SunSaver is simple and takes just 45 minutes. You can even install it right there on your sales lot or at the manufacturing facility. Echo Ethics Solar even provides hands-on in-person training if necessary. Plus, they will provide you with video tutorials and handouts with specific installation instructions that keeps adding a solar-powered electrical system to your shed fast and simple. In many cases, the end user can even perform the installation once the shed is delivered to their home. If you are interested in purchasing a unit for display and then drop shipping your orders or even ordering multiple units to have available as you build, contact my friends at Echo Echo Ethics Solar at 336-250-1284 or email sales at echoethicsolar.com. And even though they do the RTO, we're, we're not wanting to string them along in that. Mm-hmm. We would love for them to get out of that as soon as they can. If they're going to pay somebody that, they might as well pay us. But we would certainly like to help them get out of that and get on their feet. And they know it. They know you're helping them. I never could understand a car dealership that would put out a spiff. We're going to pay $1,000 if somebody sells this old truck over here on a Saturday morning. Why confuse all your salespeople trying to lead somebody to something they don't really need or want? Let's listen to what they need or want. And and they know. They know you're you're sincere and and you're trying to help them. So our our big thing is the prayer, the power of prayer. Uh, 
you and I were talking last night, and uh, I was reading in Andrew Andrew Murray's one of his books, and and he said, "Do you realize that God limited Himself uh-huh. on this earth by giving man free choice, but He gave me as a Christian the power to pray for that lost individual out of hell. I could pray for him, and God will work through me to him. That's power. Yeah." Uh, my mom, I mean, she was 84 years old before she accepted Christ. But praise the Lord for that. I mean, the, the prayer, prayer works. Seek ye for, well, I love that you don't G-E-T if you don't A-S-K. God tells the first <laughs> thing, let's ask. We got to ask. And, and you got to seek. And you got to knock. But it doesn't say you get it immediately. Uh-huh. You got to be tenacious. And sometimes uh-huh. he's wanting to change us. Uh-huh. So you, you just do it. You do it, and you do it. I remember a pastor, um, whenever our, our parents would take us to church whenever we were young, and, and uh, they used to always say, I know because I know because I know. And I don't know. It just stuck with me for years. Like, how yeah. do I know? I just yeah. know I, that's right. because I know because I know. Right. And I heard, I heard, I remember hearing these pastors talk about different um moments of their life because that's their that's their testimony that's i mean uh, as as i read the stories of the bible that's testimonies that are meant to change that inspired word of god is meant to uh, educate me and i remember being so far down uh, you know gosh i don't even know kind of overwhelmed right now with just the thought of it all my my wife's getting to travel with me now my, my daughter's getting married to a boy that, that is just great, and, and I love uh, him and his family. My son's getting ready to go to college. My wife's traveling with me. I'm, I'm just tickled about that. She's She's been a trooper through breast cancer. I think I mean, I can think about a lot of things right now that could overwhelm me that, that God has seen us through and given us as opportunities. Um, one of the things that comes to mind is whenever I was about 25 years old, I can remember wondering why I could never get my career right. I could never figure out the right career, could never be happy in a career. Mm-hmm. And I can remember, I think it's James 1.5, uh, let any man ask knowledge, and he'll be, he'll be given that knowledge. And I remember a pastor saying, you don't know what to do, flip open the Bible, put, point your finger and start reading. I was 25 years old, and I guess that's where I landed was James 1.5. And I said, okay, that's my problem, God. I'm not smart enough to succeed. I'm not wise enough. I don't have enough knowledge, which, you know, knowledge comes with experience as well too so you know there's a lot that i hadn't experienced and i just remember asking god make me smarter and i also remember my mom saying be careful what you ask for (laughs) because he'll put things in your path uh to do he'll give you information that almost is it's almost scary at times uh i i believe that um the first time i went and, and preached in in prison um um six out of seven i did an altar call first and only time i ever done one and six out of the seven guys came to know the Lord uh, wow. that was in there that day. Yeah. And it scared me. Yeah. It scared the fire out of me. Um, I actually contemplated even even wanting to be um, doing prison ministry in, in any capacity at that point because it scared me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I remember reading that, and and God gives you that. And, and, I, and I really believe this podcast is that, uh, or at least part of my plan, part mm-hmm. of the process. And I know it's weird— um, to say that because I think, wow, a podcast, how would that happen? How would that work? But uh, I'm just overwhelmed with all, all that you're saying right now. It's so it's so true that you can't separate your ministry and your work. Uh, I've tried to do that. It doesn't work. You just got to uh, stop on the lot and pray for somebody if that's what you're supposed to do that day. That's right. You know, uh, that's happened uh, several times. I remember me and Kyle was in a Burger King uh, in Madisonville, Kentucky, and you could just, the Holy Spirit could just, was all over you, could tell that this girl's having a bad day, we just stopped and prayed for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you just know when you know. I know because I know because I know, Steve. I'm going to get off of this for a minute. Uh, let's get focused back on CR Sheds. Okay. Um, what, what does the future of the shed industry, what does the future of CR Sheds look like to Steve Smith? Well, ultimately, I, I want to get to where I can turn this thing over to somebody else and uh, 
I, I've got two daughters, and one of them is involved in our business right now in the uh, accounting side. And but uh, ultimately, I, I, I we built it a, a pretty good deal, and I, I think the Lord's got me ready to go in some other directions. So uh, I, I, I when I started it, I, I wanted to be almost the Carvana, the car dealer, the Carvana of the shed industry. And I, by the way, Carvana is is like the third largest used car uh, organization in the United States, and they don't even have a car dealership. And that's got to make you wonder what are they doing that maybe the other places are not. And they're really good, really good at at, at the follow up and the, the meet and greet, the qualify uh, online, and they they've taken it to that technology where a lot of other places have kind of fought that. Mm-hmm. And and same thing in the shed industry, uh, we've done the 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 going around. I've taken one of my managers, and we go to all the different uh, shed places, and we like to see how other people do business, and. Uh, What's interesting is is go on a fe- in February when it's cold, and see who comes out to help you. <laughs> There's not a lot of them that want to get out of that heat, you know. And and then what do they say and how do they do and and what kind of product knowledge do they have and, uh, you know. And we 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 want to be a place that people can can connect with us and maybe not even have to come here. We do everything online and then we deliver it to them and. And I, and I think we're getting better and better at that. Uh, but we want to be a place that we get that, that referral business is really important to us. So, uh, you know, everybody wants to build relationships, but mm-hmm. it, it takes time. And, uh, but we, all, uh, you asked me what's next for us. I kind of feel like I've been on this horse and I'm trying to find a way off. <laughs> you know, I've got so many of them going on, so I need other people that I can bring in. Uh, that uh, want to grow, and uh, I spend a lot of my time studying uh, business and and how to grow businesses, and I, I'm interested in acquisitions. But it it takes good people. You got to have somebody. You know, there, there's only so many hours I can spend, uh-huh. so I've got to have other people I can pass it on to, and so that's what I'm looking for now. We we do want to grow, but I'm not growing anymore until I find the right person, uh-huh. and I want to grow around them. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I think it's kind of like church. If you see, if you go to a church and everybody's old, that church isn't going to grow very long. But when you've got a lot of young people and you've got the older people and they can come together, the the cap, the thing I have, uh, the older people, we have capital, uh, financial capital. But young people, they have youth. We need that youth. We, we're running out of it. They need us. They need the capital. Uh-huh. So if we can come together, and, and, and we want to. I mean, most of the, the elder people, uh, mature people, we're, we're looking for, to help other people come up. You know, it's, it's, it's not crowded at the top of the ladder. It's crowded down at the That's bottom. Right. The people That's at right. the top want to help you up. We're just looking for somebody willing to make the climb. You know, it doesn't do any good to give it give it away because then they can't maintain it. Yeah. So we, we just got to find the people that are willing to make the climb. Everybody wants to make $100,000 a year. Very few are willing to do what it takes to get there. That's right. Or to maintain it. That's right. So it's not all about money, uh, but it is, a, it is a way that we gauge. Uh, I told you one time, it, it, the value in the business realm is in direct proportion to your ability to put together complex connections. Uh-huh. If all you can do is dig a ditch, you're kind of limited uh-huh. on how far you're going to go. Uh-huh. So the more you learn, be be a lifelong learner. I, I see people all the time. We interview people. Uh, my last manager, we interviewed 135 people. Not my last one, the one before her. We we interviewed 135 people to find her. Uh, the average is so thick. But, you know, McDonald's has done a really good job learning how to operate a business with average people. Their systems and processes, they don't wake up wondering where do we put that pickle today. Right. They got the processes down, and you got to have both. You, you can't always be looking for the star player. I got to find that average person that wants to grow. That, I think that's the biggest key. Uh, we, we, are ta- we were talking last night about the, the uh, 
the story in the Bible about the corn seed falling to the ground and some fell on rocky ground, mm-hmm. some fell mm-hmm. on dry, and some in weeds. And, and ultimately, it was the it was the fertile ground that really produced. And after thinking about it for a while, my question has been, how do I make fertile ground? Well, it's got to be we find an individual and help them get the rocks out. The, the rocks of, of unforgiveness, the rocks of bitterness, or whatever it is they have buried in that ground. Let's get that out of there so we can grow some good stuff in it. And, and I think it's the mature Christians that help uh, the, the younger ones that are coming up. And, man, they need help. In this That's world right. today, my goodness. And, and I, I want to say this, too. In this world today, I think the way we compete, we compete against the, the craziness and it is craziness. Some of the craziest ideas I've ever seen in my life. The way we compete is to evangelize the good word. Uh-huh. We change other people's hearts, and it'll change their mind. They can't keep going that way, seeing that, that craziness when, when they find a better way. And we know the better way. I mean, we're living it. If, if, we, can't, if we can't be an example and share other people, something's wrong. So we use our platform, and we should be able to attract people that no, I can't keep living like this. Right. And that, and that seems to be what brings people to a, a decision. You know, we were talking about people that are suffering with addiction. Uh-huh. And why is it that they, they go for years and they've been through multiple places and then finally they, they turn around? What, what was it that got them to turn around right there? Yeah, if we could bottle that and, 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 and Amen. sell that every time. It, you know, it seems to be the heart. It's, it, it seems to be the heart and, and when the heart's ready. And, and we kind of talked about that last night, didn't we, about not asking God to deliver you from every difficult situation. But, mm-hmm. I mean, his word tells us to embrace trial and, and tribulation, embrace those difficulties so that you can overcome. So it's not always about, please, God, deliver me from it but instead deliver me through it, right? Like give me the strength because not only will my testimony stand to help someone else, it will build some grit. It will build something in me that allows me to withstand the next uh, difficult thing. I remember um, waking up in the mornings and being like, what do you got for me today, God? Whatever difficult things comes my way, send me. I can't wait. I want to, you know, because I want to, I want to get to the point where I overcome it and embrace it. And somewhere along the line, I think you lose that. Um, maybe it's different journeys. Maybe you're just in the desert at different places. So this is what I love about conversations and just sitting down with, with folks. Again, the shed is just the, it's the vehicle. It's all it is. But let's, let's be honest. I mean, people are hurting in this world constantly there. And, and we have such a cool platform. And I don't mean the podcast. I mean, the shed industry has sure. such a cool platform to be able to reach people on a daily basis through what you're saying, through prayer. Um, you know, through community uh, and, and so many different cultures that can come together. I mean, um, that the one thing that we can identify and that we can agree upon is that, that, that God is love yeah. and that he sent his son. And, the, and, then, and then let's just start there. Let's start where we can find common ground. Uh, and then let's see if we can move out from, from that direction. Steve, I get it wrong constantly. It seems like... Uh, I remember my mom talking about the children of Israel. Now they would wander in the desert for 40 years and would never get to see the promised land because uh, uh, um, of that, you know. Sure. Um, and I remember my mom saying, you know, it makes you wonder um, how you would do that over and over and over. I remember my wife's uh, dad saying that. My father-in-law would say that all the time. It makes you wonder. Makes you wonder how you can just uh, wander and wander and wander and and not see what's right in front of you at times. Um, that's, why, that's why you said some have eyes and don't see, some have ears and don't hear. Taking it back to business, it, it, to oversimplify it, every business consists of four things. It's a, it's a product or a service. Uh-huh. It's people, it's processes, and it's numbers. The people are the people we're selling to and the people we have that, that are working for us. So we, we've got a, a platform to, to almost create whatever way we want to go. You know, we can, we can create our own world uh-huh. in a sense. Uh-huh. And it could be one where we care about each other or it could be one where it's just dog eat dog. Uh-huh. You know, and, and we just choose not to be that, that 
dog eat dog part. Mm-hmm. You know, try to help each other. I love it. I, I'm glad that you that you have taken that approach. Uh, even in the shed industry, we occasionally see, unfortunately, the dog eat dog, and 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 uh, hey, we need that. Uh, unfortunately, we, we do need that to, to, to learn from, but there is a better way. There is a bigger way. Yeah. And, um, but that, that requires a lot of faith. Uh, it's like we were talking last night. One of my favorite things from my pastor would always say is to an unbeliever, you have more faith than I do, uh, to believe that, that, that nothing, nothing happens, uh, to believe that there's no God that, that takes a lot of faith. Um, I appreciate your kindness, your humility, your well thought well studied obviously i appreciate you listening to the podcast as as well um i feel like me and you could probably talk for hours um and we have (laughs) already um i'm gonna jump into i'm gonna segue just into specifically sheds uh you know we happen to show up on a day that you got a new salesperson Mm -hmm. i love your your the niceness where you you have your code of conduct hanging up and I notice these little things. You have your welcome Savannah there with a smiley face and you and your wife, Kim are just very welcoming people. So to shed on her first day. Yeah. How, how cool is that? When I come down this morning, uh, from on top of the cabin, I hear you in here very passionately speaking to your salesperson about the process. Um, how do you incorporate that in, um, with with your salespeople how do you what's the approach you take you talked last night about trial clothes you talked about uh, all the nuance of a experienced salesperson how do you touch base with that we're we're trying to develop something that for the shed seller um through shed university that that creates some kind of organization around a good professional sales appearance and um processes as you say um how do you manage that? How do you uh, construct that from the beginning for your salespeople? Well, me me being in the insurance end, but involved in car dealerships as long as I have, I, I mean, every car dealer in the United States that I know of, they run the same path. Uh-huh. Uh, they have their 10 steps, meet and greet, qualify, land them on a vehicle, trial close, demo, do a walk around, uh, write the deal up, you know, turn them over to F and I deliver. So it's a, it's a process and every one of those processes, uh, every one of those steps, they're, they're broken out where you, you, you look for the best way of doing it. But what's interesting, it, 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 we call it the 10 steps to the sale. And if you take the 80, 20 rule and, and the 80, 20 rule says that if you start out something, that first 20%, if you do it really well, typically the other 80% or the, yeah, comes together. Well, the first 20% of the 10 steps is meet and greet and qualify. If I do a really good job there and really listen to what their needs are and uh-huh, wants uh-huh. and, you know, and, and how much and how long and are they going to pay? Are they going to do RTO and, you know, what colors and, and, and really get an idea. I can take them out and probably land them on the right shed Uh and if they're trusting me if i did a good job there and i'm coming across like i do care about them then the rest of it just flows let me tell you about this mini barn everything underneath this floor is pressure treated we're not using two befores on this we're using two Uh sixes our runners are notched so each floor joist fits right down in that notch and this floor in right here's got a 30-year warranty in our and you know and you go through there and you build value Uh you know LP Sidey, my goodness, those are great people, by the way. I just want you to know I've been working with some of the people in the main office in Nashville. They're they're so good to me, and, and they've sent me so much marketing material. But if you really study that, you mean termites won't eat this? It's termite-proof? It's it's fungi-proof? and it, I mean, that's pretty cool. And when you learn all that, you're building value, and uh-huh. that's what people uh-huh. are paying for. Uh-huh. They'll buy, they'll buy the value. But if you don't have the value or if you don't go through that, it's like buying a car that's got cruise control and you never told the customer. <laughs> Man, you know, I mean, you, you got to, and you got to get excited about it. Yeah. People, people will pay big money to watch you burn. You catch them on fire about your product and believe it and, and, and get excited about it. And 
I knew a guy in in uh, Nashville many years ago. He was a he was a BMW dealer. I'm telling you, this man when he started telling you about a BMW, it just made you want one. You had to have one. Yeah, and but he knew his product knowledge so well. Yeah, and he believed in it so well. I mean, and and that's 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 doable. Why would you Why would you want to do something? Spend your life doing something, and you don't really believe in it. You know, you can't sell if you're not sold. Uh-huh. So the first person to sell is yourself, and and then sell all your employees on what we're doing is a worthy cause. It's bigger than just making a dollar, and and we're trying to change people's lives. And you know, it's kind of funny we keep rotating back to that, but it it does. God's got a way of pulling you pulling you in the right direction, and you know. It works. It works. The selling, we, we, we kind of break it down. People come on the lot, and it, it, it's such a common thing. If you ask somebody, can I help you? No, I'm just looking. Well, how long does it take to learn to quit asking them, can I help you? <laughs> you know? Have you ever been here before? A lesson yeah. I have to learn over and over and over. Um, world's worst overseller. Here, I'm uh, definitely passionate about the product, uh, but sometimes you have to stop and you have to ask. I mean, it's the same as what we talked sure. about in, 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 in your ministry. Mm. You know, you have to ask. Uh, we have to ask for the sale. And that was always one of the most difficult things for me um, to ask for someone's money. Um, I'll be honest with you. There's times even in, uh, I mean, my revenue stream is, is advertising. It's not difficult to see listen to to this show and listen to others. And you're going to find that, you know, my goal is to try and like build trust resources in the industry. And, and they're still to this day, I sort of suffer with um, asking for what it is, you know, a value I've undersold things at times. I've had to, I've had to learn even whenever I first sold sheds. I mean, I remember uh, being willing to, to take less on my commission um, to be able to get the sale thinking some money is better than no money today. Um, I remember a guy asked me one time and I did get bold. He said, uh, I'm a veteran. Would you, you know, give me a discount? And I said, I'm a veteran. Would you pay full price? <laughs> I wouldn't want to get in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> so we just, uh, you know, it's, it, it is difficult from, from time to time, but you have to ask, you have to ask, oh, yeah. you know, you, you came yeah. here for the purpose of looking for storage for looking for a shed we're looking sure. for a tiny home, a carport, something, furniture. Sure. Um, this is what it cost, you know. Um, I, I like what you said earlier in, in terms of not putting money before anything, but it does just take a certain amount of money to succeed. It just, it's it, it's what it is. Yeah. Uh, money's a, a, it's an idea. It's fake. It's imaginary, right? It's not real. It's an exchange of ideas. It's an exchange of value for what we believe is, is good enough. Um, so my goal is to always try and provide the, the listeners with the best example of what your product or your service is. And sometimes that means even having uh, those who offer products and services on the show to be able to describe that. I've, I've, I've been told, don't do that. Well, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to do yeah. that because uh, I'm not trying to limit anybody. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with them being able to, and, and, and it's exactly what you said before. God will figure the rest out. Um, if he, if he doesn't want me in this business or in a podcast anyway, like it'll be his decision uh, and I'll just have to listen to make sure I hear anyway. So a lot of times uh, when we're training finance managers or uh, we do that in the automobile industry, they, they want us to, to teach them a new close, but, but actually a, a close is nothing more than a natural ending to a really good presentation. Mm. Get really good on your presentation mm-hmm. And, and be able to to share the value with the customer that you're looking for. And when you know what's important to them, you're able to personalize it. Uh, we, we wrote a statement that uh, we were trying to identify why are people buying mini barns? And really, it only comes down to two reasons. They're either looking for a space or a place. And our, our statement just, just said that we can deliver that space in their place, in their backyard, very quickly, uh-huh. and, and and it does. It's she, shed, she sheds or places to store things, and it's not complicated. Selling's not it, selling's easy if you know how. Uh-huh. And, and and sometimes we overcomplicate it. We're too caught up in selling, and really they want to know. They want to know the facts. They don't want you to you know 
make up stuff. They just want you to be honest and help me make a decision. Yeah. Uh, that's real. And sometimes you draw it out on a piece of paper and the benefits yeah. and, the, you know, and, and the worst thing for me is I get so caught up out there and I know my inventory and I sometimes want to show them too much and show them too much and they won't buy nothing. Oh, so, information overload. Yeah. Yeah. So, you just give them so much. I know I, I yeah. tr- tried perfecting my uh pitch if that's what you're gonna call it to the point to where whenever they first showed up i would just I, I would really go heavy on product information and you can you can really complicate a customer by giving them all of what you know um yeah they don't they sure. don't, a lot of times they don't care unless they're asking for that knowledge uh being a good listener is is key definitely in the process of sales so so steve if let's just say i, I think you have a, a, a beautiful business here i think you have a beautiful property um if, if somebody's listening to this podcast and they say, I really like that guy, I want to reach out to him for nothing more than to just to have a conversation. Is that welcome? Well, it is welcome, but I got to tell you, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got a list of people I got to call back already. <laughs> um, let's go deeper and let's say somebody feels the urge to say, I want to no. Could I let you talk to my wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can tell you what I'm going to say before I ever say it. <laughs> she's already she's already got it lined out for you to say oh, anyway, yeah. right? Yeah, she's heard all these sales meetings. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's say that they just feel that that nudge on their shoulder to say, maybe I want to see this property. Maybe I want to know this guy. Maybe I want to. Maybe God's been leading me to a place of like new beginning or new opportunity and. Uh, maybe I'm the guy, maybe I'm not. Um, uh, that's welcome. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, we are looking for some people, some special people. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you this before you even reach out to me is pray about it and see if you, you feel some life about moving in this direction if you're out of the area. And, and I, I, I just would, would, would welcome to try to connect with somebody that uh, wants to grow. The right people. Yeah, that's right. The right people. Um, you're in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Beautiful, yes. beautiful. Walking location. horse capital of the world yeah. right here. Yeah. A- and what I learned yesterday <laughs> is the home of the, it's a pencil capital. Uh, the number is. two pencils made <laughs> yeah. here. We, that's right. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Uh, what well, a nice little town. You're, south, you're, you're in between Chattanooga and, and Nashville. Beautiful countryside. Like I said, the farms, uh, I love it. Uh, there might just be somebody who listens, who says, I like that guy. I want to know more. Um, yeah. Pray about that. Maybe give Steve a call if that seems to be the right fit for you. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think it's an awesome opportunity. Um, all hearts clear. Anything else that's on your mind? I feel like me and you can do a follow up, uh, easily, easily. It does seem the flow, doesn't it? Uh, 50 minutes goes by faster than you can. You can think um, it, it really happens quick. A lot of people are nervous about coming on the podcast, and then when it's over, they're like, whoa, that was really fast and mm-hmm. fairly uh, fairly easy. Um, it's really just a story. It's a, it's a shed story. It's a shed journey. It's about your shed life, but it's always about more than that. It's about the people. Uh, none of this happens without the people, and I think we're here to, to um, sharpen iron, speak to each other. And that, that's all I'm hoping to accomplish. And if your business sees benefit through it, so be it. Uh, guys, don't forget to check out uh, the sponsors, uh, those that advertise. Obviously, appreciate their commitment to being able to keep this thing going. If it wasn't for them, um, I'd be taking a job tomorrow. So <laughs> That's a bad thought. As long as <laughs> it's nice to not have to work, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, love, love, love each and every one of you. Uh, you have been just awesome. Um, you, you and your wife have, have been hospitable and, and, uh, I enjoy our conversations. I enjoy your, your, your text messages of encouragement. Good. Uh, when, when, when only I get to see them, but uh, that's who you are. And I appreciate that. And if uh, somebody felt that nudge, that's who you're going to be, uh, working for. So uh, couldn't give a greater endorsement to, to anybody else. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I will share this with you. You're talking about, I I do appreciate that encouragement. You know, the Bible does tell us to to come together. 
And some people say, well, it doesn't necessarily say I've got to go to church. You know, it does say for us to come together and encourage one another. And through these times, man, we need encouragement. Mm -hmm. We need to encourage each other. And we do need to speak up. I I, I do believe that when we're in a situation and we know it's not right, I believe we're called to speak God's word and and let it be what it is. Mm -hmm. And if if somebody's feelings are hurt, that doesn't make you wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. The words you're saying are still truth, mm-hmm. and and I think that's important to, to just, you know, you, you may take a hit, and they may be picking in my place tomorrow, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll go down swinging. <laughs> I, it, it, you you got to stand up. So uh, look for the opportunity and, 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 and talk to people's hearts. I, th- I think that's what will make the difference. Um, it, it's, it's definitely made all the difference for me. You know, no amount of um, – no amount of fire and brimstone preaching ever reached me, but love certainly reached me. So I think whenever you can show people um, love, and and, and 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 like you said, sometimes that means tough love. Amen. Sometimes that just means calling it like it is. I know I've had to hear things before, but you know, after I'm uh, after I'm cut, I, I, I heal, and and the word says that you know uh, truth will do that to you, you even though it it sucks, it just stinks to have to go through it. Um, I'd rather go through it and heal. And, and and not bleed all over everybody else because I'm I'm hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I could tell you, I could just share with you testimony after testimony. But um, all that matters to me is I know that God is real, and I know I'll never deny that he is because he's already done so much for me. And sometimes I don't even know why we, we, we call it the Shed Geek Podcast. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> like I said, sheds are the avenue, but these conversations and these moments are the greatest. Um I guess we're going to get on the road and head south from here and maybe have conversation with some more people, but I can't say thank you enough. I wish we could just talk about the details of the shed industry, the sales process and and the delivery process and all that sometimes. And sometimes it's for that and sometimes it's not. Um, So I hope somebody's blessed by this today. I encourage you to reach out to my friend, Steve Smith, CR Sheds, God-centered, solutions-oriented um Shelbyville Tennessee absolutely phenomenal gentleman uh that I hope to be friends with for a long time um we prayed before we got on here um is it okay if we close out in prayer we may have people praying for us to close out (laughs) (laughs) Lord we just thank you right now for this this time that we had to come together Lord we ask you to bless those out in the audience and uh, Lord, if there's any words that that they can use uh, that we've shared today, and and uh, I, I I do pray if if you lead them to reach out to me, Lord, uh, just give us the time and, and and make the space. And Father, thank you for everything that Shannon's doing, and and watch over him and his family as they travel and keep them safe, Lord. We pray it in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.